Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. So from time to time, I like to pause and take a break from what's in the news and what's trending and cover some more evergreen techniques that are inside an adversary's arsenal. It's good to cover these techniques because again, they're widely used, they continue to be effective, and they're something that you should be detecting in your networks, you should be hunting for. And again, these are just tried and true techniques that are probably never gonna go away. So one of them that I wanna talk about today is tried and true phishing. Again, it's one of those initial access vectors. It's how many times uh, an actor is going to get that initial access into your network. And we're gonna talk about phishing with zip files. Um, again, nothing really new, novel here about the technique. Zip files have been around for a while. Had the sample that someone sent me. I opened it in the browser. I can go ahead and I'm going to extract this executable and it's gonna download from my browser. Wait, wait a second, zip? Yeah, if you're just as confused as I was there for a second, um, Spoiler alert, last year the zip TLD became available and, you know, as experts and, and industry professionals, you know, surmised, that's something that attackers were going to start using pretty rapidly and adding to their phishing arsenals. And sure enough, that happened. So um, lots of evidence of this, um, many examples. Um, good news is a lot of people took the um, easy, you know, accessible domain names. So you imagine attachment.zip or installer.zip or things like that, um, you know, they've been hosting those for good and giving people, you know, awareness that says, hey, uh, this isn't actually a zip file that you're downloading. Um, but it is very easy still for attackers to register these domains, to use them as part of their phishing exercises. And this is something that is still widely used. So wanted to add this and, you know, do a little bit of a deeper dive here in this threat snapshot. You know, what makes this particularly so effective is um, just really how URLs are structured. So, you know, at a glance, can you spot the difference between these two URLs? Um, can actually, if you take a look in the bottom corner here, this one you can see is actually redirecting to b1271.zip, and this one is actually a GitHub link. But, you know, unless you, you know, know to look for that at sign, or maybe you're looking at a slightly more angled, you know, slash, um, you're probably not going to notice the difference between those. So if that link was in a, an email and said, hey, you need to download this file, um, you'd probably believe it. And again, you could configure a website to, as soon as a user browses there, download a file. So, you know, it could be a very tricky and very convincing exercise. And again, why this works is a couple of things. So, um, you know, this blog post does a really good job of explaining, again, some of the basic fundamentals here. So, the URL has several different parts. You've got the scheme is that HTTP, HTTPS. Um, if you're using, you know, basic authentication, you can put the credentials actually in the URL, so the username, password, and, you know, that would be, you know, followed by an at sign. So, you know, what you kind of notice in this URL up here is that all of this stuff is, it's actually the one here, all of this stuff is technically that user info piece. Um, and that's going to get, you know, technically, if it was a web server configured to use basic authentication, that would be passed to it. Otherwise, that data can just be ignored. This is really your DNS entry, the host that it's going to connect to, which is going to be a zip file or a zip domain. And then you could put whatever path you wanted if needed. But again, you've got something that looks like a file extension, you know, whatever dot zip. Very convincing, very easy to use. And, you know, this is something that attackers have have used and you can you can kind of see here you know oh hey i've got this you know file i want to download click it automatically downloads very you know very risky very detectable here um, they even talk here a couple of you know detection you know strategies which we'll dive into as well um you know one of the reasons this is so effective is because unicode characters are allowed in urls and they're using a couple of different unicode characters for you know, different slashes here um, that are, again, supported. One of them is a, a math character. Another is just in a, another language. But, you know, that in conjunction allows it to construct convincing paths. Not necessarily that that's even needed. Um, Red Canary had this example of, you know, what if you had a URL that looked kind of like this or, or maybe even this where there's 
Again, base64 encoded strings or other long things, URL encoded. Again, those are not uncommon things to see, especially, you know, in certain environments, you know, I'm not going to, you know, point names at, at you know, uh, servers and things, but you know, that data can be there. So, you know, looking at a glance, yep, you know, this is my, my company or this is a trusted, you know, site that we use. This is a file extension. I might click that link. And, and that's exactly here what we wanted to cover today. So what does this threat actually look like? Um, we've got an example here of using that zip top level domain and how you could use that for, again, a phishing exercise. So got a Linux server. We're, again, having a little bit of DNS um, stuff there. So we're, you know, hosting this ourselves. Um, we can see the example in here where, you know, Maybe you're opening an email. This can be an office document. Hey, we've got this, you know, invoice.zip that I want to, you know, download. Let me paste that into the browser. And, oh, it just downloaded that, you know, zip file. So that was exactly what as I was expecting as a user. Looks like everything is good. I can open that zip file up. And, you know, there's an invoice HTML. Okay, you know, that all looks good. Uh, you know, security warning, whatever, and this is a uh, PowerShell prompt. So clearly I've been hacked. Um, you know, we could take a little bit deeper dive here, but really we want to focus on the zip part. Don't care that it's PowerShell, spawn to calc, okay, whatever. Um, again, you get the picture. Like really anything can be done in that post-exploitation phase. Really we're focusing on the user awareness part of it looked like it was a zip file. You know, I put that in my browser and that's the piece. So good news. There's lots of detection, lots of hunting strategies for this. Um, let's talk through a couple of them right now. So um, for probably more for hunting, you could also use this if you wanted to, you know, create a rule. Again, there would probably be a lot more tuning you would have to do for your organization. You can take two approaches to these. Um, these are Sigma community rules. One of them is a whitelisting approach. One is a blacklisting approach. So whitelisting, again, you could see what are the common top-level domains that you have in your organization and basically look for any weird file downloads that are coming from things that are not one of these common sites. So not a .com, not a .org, not a .net. Um, this, this could work. You could also take a blacklist approach um, where, again, I want to take specific top-level domains like the .zip or like that .download or you know other domains and use that to, again, say if I see any of those hits, that works. Um, this one probably needs a little less tuning, but you'll have to maintain and keep that up to date, whatever strategy works for you. Also, definitely recommend, you know, trying these out as hunting rules first, see how many hits they have, and then you can, you know, see and decide if that makes something that you would want to deploy. More basically, again, if you're looking at this from a network level, um, just seeing if there is uh, .zip um, in couple different ways you could do that. So this is using um, SSL um, in your certificate, your logs. So you could see if there's any SSL certificates that have been, you know, created or stored with that .zip file. So this would be a, an opportunity as well. Um, you can also look for just, um, you know, HTTP connections, especially with that at sign to a zip. Um, you could also include, again, some of those Unicode characters. Um, good opportunity for hunting if you have network data. I would say both of those work really well. A uh, little bit less probably on, again, typical, like, you know, endpoint detections, you know, process file events. Um, you know, zip files happen frequently in, you know, a network. Um, so downloading a zip file isn't going to be interesting. But um, if you have Sysmon, there is a, um, you know, particular event code. So that's event 15. That's, um, so I believe, the file stream hash. So it's a little interesting of a log file. You can see here from, again, one of our hits, um, or this is saying that, you know, this, it's kind of that mark of the web, um, if you're familiar. So, you know, there was um, an internet zone, and it was this host URL, so invoice.zip. And the target file name here also has a zip. Again, that doesn't necessarily have to be that, but that's how this is constructed. But you could basically use this event code to see if there are any things downloaded from a domain that had zip as the extension. So um, this is another opportunity here for Sysmon. Um, some EDRs have you know similar data, but 
this is, uh, again, a good way to um, detect that sort of behavior more at an endpoint level if you don't have that network telemetry. This is also a little bit higher fidelity, too, I think. Um, so, yeah, definitely want to keep you guys safe and secure from threats like this. So that is our threat snap threat snapshot for the week. Uh, this is a weekly series, so be sure to like, subscribe, comment below the video, and we'll see you next time.